Before we look at some more code, I want to introduce you to some of the facilities that come with Visual Studio for debugging your code. In other words, tracking down errors in the code. The first and probably most useful one that I want to talk about is being able to set a breakpoint and then step through the code. I can set a breakpoint by clicking on the grey bar here. That's a breakpoint. Now I'm going to run the program, watch what happens. I'm now in what's called break mode or debugging mode. My application ran at full speed until it came to the breakpoint and now it's suspended and I can step through the code one line at a time. There are a number of buttons I can use to do this up here. Step into, step over, step out. I'll say more about these two later. The most useful one is step into. Notice I can also use the function key F8 to do the same thing. So when I click the button, I'm getting a message about how the stepping facility will behave. I'm not too worried about this for now. I'm just going to say I don't want to see these messages again. It's highlighting the line of code that it's about to execute next. And now it's about to execute this line of code. And again, it's about to execute this line of code. When I'm in debug mode, I can hover over the name of a variable to see its contents. So I can see that the string mail has been assigned to this variable. Drum has gone into this one, and Kevin has gone into that one. If I take a look at this variable, it hasn't been assigned a value yet, because this line hasn't executed yet. Let's continue stepping. And I can see there's something inside that variable now. The final line of code in this procedure will do some output. So I've been switched back to the user interface. And finally, the procedure will come to an end. My application is still running, the form is still on the screen. But the procedure which I launched when I clicked on the button has now finished. I can use as few or as many breakpoints as I like. I'm going to remove this breakpoint just by clicking on it again and I'll place a breakpoint here instead. I'm also going to place a breakpoint on the form's load event handler. Let's run it again. Now, as I told you in the previous video, when you launch a Windows Forms application, the form is loaded into memory before it hits the screen. So the form's load event handler is running first. I'll step through that and it's populating the list box. When that's complete, the form can hit the screen. And clicking the button causes the button's click event handler to start running. And we've seen this before. When we're in debug mode, there's some extra windows that you might want to switch on. A particularly useful one is called the Locals window. You can find it here. On the Debug menu. Debug. Windows. Locals. What it's showing me is the contents of any local variables. In other words, variables which have been declared within this procedure. I'll say more about the difference between local and global variables later on. Suffice to say for now, this is an alternative way of finding out what's inside a variable. I can see a nice summary down here. There's additional information in this window as well, which pertains to these parameters which I mentioned in another video. We'll say more about these later. With the Locals window, I can actually change the contents of a variable on the fly, as it were. I just double-click it here and retype it. I've overwritten the existing value of that variable. 
If you've finished stepping through your program, you can stop the execution just by clicking on this red square. Or you can press continue and it will jump you straight to the next breakpoint, if there is one. At this point, I just want to return to a type of error that you've seen already, and that's the so-called syntax error. For example, if I misspell the word text, I type text on the end. I've got a red wavy line. If I open a bracket but forget to close it, again, that's a syntax error. I can see a red wavy line on the end of this. Keep an eye out for these because your program won't run properly if you don't fix them. I like to fix them as I go along, but let's see what happens when I try to run a program which has got syntax errors like this in it. There were build errors, would you like to continue and run the last successful build? Well that begs the question, what does it mean by build? So let's say no, and I'm going to switch on something called the output window. Watch what happens when I try to run the program again. Build 0 succeeded, 1 failed. This tells us something very important about VB.NET programs. When you write a program, you're writing source code, code that a human being can understand. But before you can run a program, it has to be compiled. What that means is it has to be turned into machine code, binary ones and zeros, that the computer can understand. When you press the start button, Visual Studio will automatically try to compile the program first. Another name for compiling a program, or compilation, is to build the program. So you can see here the program has failed to compile, the build failed, and I'm very kindly being asked would I like to use the last successful build? Would I like to run the version of the program that compiled successfully previously? Well, in this case, the answer is no. I want to fix this version of the program. So I'm going to click on no. And now I have a list of errors. This is really just a summary of the same information that I saw with the red wavy lines. I'm being told that it's expecting a closing bracket. A double click on there and it jumps me to where I need to do the fix. And I'm being told that TEX is not a member of text box. In other words, TEX is not a property of a text box. A double click and it will jump me straight to that line. I can fix it here now. As I said before though, I like to watch out for the red wavy lines while I'm coding and fix them as I go along. I'll show you some more debugging facilities as and when I need them in later videos.